Good morning, fourth graders. Well, today we're up to our uh, skill of 4.7, which is using repeated subtraction to do division problems. We had discussed a few days ago how multiplication, we, we were reminding ourselves that multiplication is repeated addition, and so therefore division would have to be repeated subtraction. You guys actually came up with that, which I was really glad about. And we're actually going to see how it works here. Now, I would never recommend this method for doing division because it's very cumbersome, slow, takes a lot of space, as you will see. But it is part of our metacognition to understand really what's happening in division. We, we can often just take equal sets away of a certain number until we have nothing left, and that is our repeated subtraction. So let's look at our problem here, all right? John is building a backyard pizza oven with an arch opening. He has 72 bricks. He will place six bricks at a time as he builds the oven. If he arranges the bricks in piles of six, how many piles will he have? So here's his pile of, um, here is his pile of 72 bricks, and now he's taking piles of six away. So he is re subtracting six, uh, repeatedly from the total. So we're going to look down here and we're going to do this part of record the subtraction on grid paper. We're going to take 6 away from 72. So we'll start with our total of 72 and we'll take away 6 and that leaves us with 66. We've taken 6 away once and now we only have 66 bricks left. Now we take away another 6 because we still have plenty to take sets of 6 away from and 66 minus 6 is 60. And from 60, we're going to take away another 6, and that leaves us 54 bricks. And then we'll take another 6 away, and that's going to leave us with 48 bricks. Do you notice what's happening here? We're actually ending up with multiples of 6. These are all multiples of 6 as we're taking away our sets of 6. 48 subtract 6, that's 42 bricks left. We can make from that another set of 6, so we'll take another set of 6 away. That leaves us with 36. Then we have 36 minus 6, and that's going to leave us with 30. Now you see how cumbersome this is, because now I have to start a new list over here and write 30 up here because I <laughs> ran out of room. 30 minus 6 is 24. And then 24 minus 6 is 18. And then 18 minus 6 is 12. And then 12 minus 6 is 6. We can't stop until we get to 0. And then 6 minus 6 is 0. Now we can stop. Now in order to determine how many times we could take 6 away from 72, we have to, we have to count our 6's. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We were able to take 6 away 12 times. And 12 then becomes our quotient or the answer to 72 divided by 6. So you can see that this is a, a uh, cumbersome um, strategy. Now the first uh, step was begin with 72 counters, subtract 6 counters. So we did that. How many are left? We have 0 left. If 72 was not a multiple of 6, we would not have ended up at 0. We would have had a, think about it, what would we have had? Leftovers, right, which we call in division, right, remainders. All right, so down here we're going to say this is where we recorded it on graph paper. Here's where I recorded it on just my workspace. Now, can you reach e zero evenly? And I can't write with this pen, it's too laggy, but um, yes, you can reach zero evenly. What's our explanation? The reason why we reach zero is because our dividend, which is 72, is a multiple of 6 and therefore will divide evenly by 6 with a remainder of 0. Some explanation like that would fit 
this, ans this question that's being asked very nicely. Now down here, count the number of times you subtracted uh, the counters. So we were able to subtract six counters 12 times, which we already had from our work over here. And so there are 12 piles of six bricks. And we can check that with multiplication. We should always check our division with multiplication. So what is six times 12? If you either use your multiplication chart or you know your multiplication facts, you know that 6 times 12 or 12 times 6 is 72, which is the number that we started with. So we know our answer is correct. Now who wants to do this much work? This is ridiculous. So what can we do to streamline this? Well, there's some things I know, and if you think back to the lesson that we were reviewing um, and we worked on just a little while ago, you're going to realize that um, we don't have to take just six is away. If we have enough, and we started with 72, if we have enough, we can take chunks of six away. And the best way we can take large chunks away is, as we were discussing, multiples of six that are also multiples of 10. That means six times 10, which is 60, six times 20, which is 120, six times 30, which would be 180. Those are large chunks. So that way we don't have to take away just one six at a time. So if we're looking at 72 and we look at our larger multiples of six because they are all multiples of six over here, can you see a large multiple of six that we could start with that would kind of cut back on that process of taking six away one six at a time? Yes, good, hopefully you notice 60. 60 works, 120 doesn't work, or 180 because they're both larger than the number that we're starting with, our dividend of 72. So we're going to take away this all at once. Notice how easy that is. So if we take away 60 all at once, we're down to 12. Wow. But we have to write here, how many times do we take 6 away here? How many times is 60? Um, you should realize that it's 10 times 60. So we took right away in one big jump. We took 10 sixes away. Why did we take, how did we know it was 10 sixes? Because 10 times six is 60. So we just took a, a bunch right off the bat. Now 12, that's a little easier, because then we can see, I know how many sixes I can take away from 12, right? That's two sixes, that's two times six is 12. So now I'm down to zero in just two steps. So look how nicely that works. Now all I have to do is add my chunk of 10 sixes I took away, with my chunk of two sixes, and that gives me 12. Boy, does that make that a lot easier. If you weren't sure, you could have taken 12 minus six is six, right? And then taken the six away another time, and you still would have ended up taking six away two more times because you had 12 left. This makes it a lot more, uh, I guess, a lot more doable to do repeated subtraction. So let's just try another one, all right, that works that way rather nicely. See if I can select this. Oh, oh my goodness, that's weird. All right, so let me just delete that. Now let's do another problem that works well. And what we're going to do is we're going to do 65 divided by 5. We'll wait till that appears. Okay, 65 divided by 5. Now, I could start taking fives away and do 65 minus 5 is 60. 60 minus 5 is 55. 55 minus 5 is 50. But my goodness, that just absolutely makes no sense. So let's look at 65. Let's think about the larger multiples of 5, which is the multiples of 5 that are also multiples of 10. 5 times 10, 5 times 20, and so on. When I do 5 times 10, I see I have 50. When I do 5 times 20, I'm up to 100. That's too much. So I can't do 5, I can't take away 20 fives, but I can take away 10 fives because I know 5 times 10 is 50. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a large chunk away. And so that's 50. I'm taking 50 away from the 65. Now I know that that is that 50 that I took away is really 10 times my divisor, there we go, 
uh, 10 times 5. So I took 10 sets of 5s away all at once. So now I'm only left with 15. And now I kind of know how many sets of 5 I can take away from 15. If you know your multiplication facts, you know that you can take 5 away three more times because 3 times 5 is 15. And we would jump right to the 0. But if you're not sure of it, you could do it this way. 15 minus 5 is 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. And we're going to wait for that to appear. There we go. So we could have taken it away three more times this way. But many of you know that 15 is 3 times 5. So you could have instantly taken it away saying, I can take three more 5s from 15 right away. When we add our two, again, these are partial quotients. When we add them all together, we can see that our answer is going to be 13. Let's try one more, and I'm going to try to think of one very quickly. Oops, let's get the select tool. And I will select this big bunch over here and delete it. There we go. Now, um, get my brush again. Let's think of another kind of friendly one. Let's do um, 51 divided by 3. Now I'm going to do my repeated subtraction, but I do not want to start subtracting 3's as individual 3's. I'm going to think of multiples of 3 that are also multiples of 10 that I can use to take away large chunks. So if I count by 30, or count by actually 3's, but in multiply by 10's, that's 30 and 60. I guess that's come to by 30's. Um, I can see that 60 is too much. Can't go there, but I can take away the 30. So 51 minus 30 brings me right down to 21. And 30, I know, when I took 30 away, I took 3 away 10 times, all at once, because 10 times 3 is 30. And I just took, took 3 away 10 times, all at once. Now down here, I know 21, because I know I could go and continue to take away 3 one at a time, but I know this is a multiple of 3, and I know that 7 times 3 is 21. So I'm going to take 3 away 7 more times instantly, and that brings me right down to 0, and therefore I can add these two partial quotients, 10 plus 7, and I know that my answer to 51 divided by 3 is 7. All right, let's try a three-digit one because those are kind of um, harder to do, I suppose, because we have to get up higher into our multiples of 10, and we can do it in chunks. So again, one more time, I'm going to get rid of this, and let me think of a larger number that I can now divide. I might even keep with the divisor of 3. Okay, so now I'm going to pick a larger number, and I'm going to pick the number 102 divided by 3. Wow, that's a big number, right? And of course 100, if I look at the 10 part, 10 is not a multiple of 3, therefore 100 is not a multiple of 3, so I can't use that. But again, I'm going to use my multiples of 3 and think about it. Now I, I may not want to do, um, if I did 30, and 60 and 90. I could see where I could start here and I could start right with 90. But let's just kind of stick with taking chunks of 10 away and see how that might work if you didn't want to go counting by uh, 3 up into the larger numbers. So let's do this. 102 minus 30. Okay, we're going to take a chunk of 10. So we took it away 10 times, right? Times 10. Took it away 10 times. So third, 102 minus 30 is 72. Okay. Then I, I have enough to take another chunk of 30 away. So I'm going to take another chunk of 30 away. And so that means I took it away another 10 times. Right? So that leaves me 42. 
All right. Then I can take another chunk of 30 away. See, I can just keep taking away chunks of 30 rather than three. This would be ridiculous to do threes. So I'm going to take an another chunk of 30, which means I can take it away another 10 times. That leaves me 12. 42 minus 3 is 12. And then I, I know what this is. I know that I can take 12 from that. And when I do that, that brings me down to 0. And I know that 12 is 4 threes. OK? So that I was able to take four threes away all at once because three times four or four times three is 12. And so I add all these up in chunks of 10 until I run out. And then looking at my smaller uh, partial dividend that I have left here, I just have four more to take away. All together, when I add that all up, what does that add to? That adds to 30, oops, 34. So 34 is our quotient for this. Now, we should be doing a check, right? We should definitely be doing a check um, by multiplying. So if, if 102 divided by 3 is 34, then 34 times 3 should be 102. Let's just check that out. 34 times 3, we're going to check our division with multiplication. 4 times 3 is 12. Put the 2 in the 1's column. Regroup the 10 from the 12 over here. 3 times 3 is 9 or 3 times 3 tenths is 90, uh, or 9 tenths, plus one more tenth. That gives us 9 plus 1 is 10, or 10 tenths. And that's where that comes from. And now we know our answer is correct. So we're going to look at using repeated subtraction just to understand division a little bit better. But I don't think it's going to be a strategy that you're going to find easy to use. Although I might be wrong. Good luck, and we'll try this today.